Hello, welcome to What The Tesla. Today I have a really exciting video for you. I am going to be installing and reviewing the One Car Stereo digital driver's display. Now this digital driver's display is compatible with both the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y, and it enables Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There are a number of these screens available for purchase. Some of them are better than others. I think genuinely this one is probably one of the better ones and I'll explain why later. So this video is actually split into two parts. The first part, I'll take you through the installation and why I think there might not be many video reviews of right-hand drive Model 3 or Model Y installations. We'll come on to that. And also the review of the unit itself. And um, if you are just here for the review, if you click underneath the video in the video description, I'll leave a time code so that you can easily access that. Right, let's get into it. So then, first of all, let's take a look inside the box. And then under the protection, you have the unit itself. And then you have the wiring loom. Just make sure that you order the correct model for your vehicle because there are different types of wiring loom as I found out. Also in the box, you have the bracket for the back of the dashboard, which secures the screen in place. And you've got yourself a trim removal tool. Let's take a look at the actual screen itself. Yeah, that's really nice. And it looks like it'll be a great match for the car too. All right, let's start the installation. So the first thing to do is to remove this side here. There's three clips, there's two at the top and one at the bottom. And there we go. And this is one reason why I got some more microfibers is so that I can lay these pieces down and not get them scratched. All right, now on to the other side. All right, so once again, same procedure on this side, take this panel off. So again, one clip at the bottom, two clips at the top. Another microfiber, rest the panel on top. Now it's time to remove the actual dash itself. So that's the more tricky bit. Again, it's just a series of clips all the way along. So we'll start here and sort of work our way along just building up the courage to do this to my own car. All right, let's do it. Okay, dash off. Let's put this in my safe so it doesn't get scratched. The safest place is obviously inside. Oh, and a dog's come to join me. Hello, you gonna help me? Yeah, here's the screwdriver. There you go. Mm. Yeah, not much help. So the next piece of the puzzle is to run the cables through the dash. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You're not helping. Okay, so being here in the UK, we're gonna count 36 holes from here. And then the red one, because the red one is closest to this side, goes through hole number 36, 37, 38, 39, because they are three holes apart. As you can see, there's two here between them. So let's get those pushed through. So just very lightly pull the cables through. There's little holes between each one and these actually fit between each of these little clips here. It should all press in very nicely to those clips. On the back there, that's what it looks like. So I've just spinned it round so that I can work with the camera facing this side. And then we're going to install the back plate. You've got some larger holes. These ones go through the larger holes. And then the smaller ones are for the screws to fit into these holes here. This is a non-destructive process. So actually, if you wanted to remove this at any point, either to sell the car and put it in another car, then you could quite easily do that. I'm not tightening these too much at the moment just so that I can see which holes actually have screws. Once we're happy with the placement, just give them a tighten. 
and as always it's best to go do one side first, tighten one side and alternate just so we get even tension. All right, there we have it. Fully installed, fits nicely and the color match is actually pretty good. So the next thing is to take this back out to the car and get it all lined up and ready to go with the wiring loom. Hello, I visit you from the future. Yeah, okay. So I have got this installed now. However, um, as you might be able to tell, I'm not wearing the same clothes and that's because there's different wiring looms. Now I on the website said that I had the Model 3 performance version, which I do. However, it appears that there was a bit of a change. So mine is a Model 3 performance from December 2020, which is from the Fremont factory, not one of the made in China models. So this is the wiring harness that they sent. And goodness me, it's difficult to install the wiring harness. More on that later. But when I finally got the connection from behind the dashboard from the, the computer out, I realized that these were not the correct connectors. So I spoke to One Car Stereo and they kindly sent me the correct wiring loom. Let's get back into the install with the new wiring loom. Let's go. So as this next bit involves the electrics, I am going to turn the car off. Now, if you've ever wondered how to turn the car off, you go into safety, scroll down, power off, and then to turn it back on again, you just simply put your foot on the brake pedal. Let's do it. Right, so the next job is to remove the panel from underneath the glove box. So there's a series of clips under here that should just pop out. And this end of the tool here is good for removing those pins. So the way that these pins work is there's actually two parts. There's this inner piece, which pops out first, and then the rest of the clip can pull out. On my car, there were just three clips. Then once those clips have been removed, you just pull this down, and then that exposes everything underneath. So the first thing to do once you've got the underneath the dashboard pulled out down here is to feed these cables up through there. Now there is a little gap and if you look you'll be able to see that and you just feed them nicely through and then they're going to go along the dashboard. Now the next thing to do is to find the wiring loom where we need to intercept the T3 cable. So that is the next challenge. It's under here somewhere. Let's do it. This part is much easier if I show you with pictures. What we've got here is a white connector and a gray connector. And it's the gray one that we need to intercept in order to plug the screen in. It is easier to pull the white one out first and then get to the gray one. Just remember to plug everything back in fairly quickly if you can and that's because if you leave these cables out for too long your car will go into kind of a debug mode and I think all it did for me was it disabled all my speakers. If it does do that all you need to do is shut everything off, lock your car, go make yourself a cup of tea and then 10 or 15 minutes later come back and everything should be fine. Anyway to pull these out all you do is you push the clip down which is a locking clip and then you pull it out. Now they are in quite well, so you do need to give it a little bit of a tug. Just be careful not to break any of the wires and be careful not to break the clips. But it is that gray one at the back that you need to intercept. Okay, so I'm just gonna secure this wire now with a little bit of Gorilla Tape along here just so that there's no rattles. The other reason for the Gorilla Tape is just to keep it out of the way of these clips because when we're putting the dashboard back on, we don't want to trap the wire in the clips. Finally, it's time to reassemble the car. So just remember to plug all your cables back in. When I was putting the dashboard back on, I found these clips that come off as well and it just helps putting the dashboard back into place a little bit easier. Then put the side panels back on and the job's a good one. Okay, so this is what it looks like from a driver's perspective. That's exactly how I see it when I am driving my car. So I'm sure you'll agree, it's the perfect size and it works really well. So in order to connect your phone, you swipe from the right hand side and then there's a little cog icon 
and that will then take you to the settings. And in here, you can choose things like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and whether you would like it normal or full screen. So I want it normal and I obviously have Android Auto. Now I do have CarPlay as well with a different phone and I'll come onto that in a few minutes time. But for now, we need to connect via the Bluetooth. Bring your phone settings if you find BT Link and connect to that and then click on the Android Auto. It actually gives you a guide as to how to connect your phone. And there we go, we have Android Auto connected. So within Android Auto, it's got all the usual features. So you've got, like I said, Waze, you've got Audible, you've got YouTube Music, some of the things that you don't have on the Tesla screen, BBC Sounds, and basically you can add a bunch of apps in and you have access to those as well. Now, if you want to go full screen, again, you just go to the settings and you choose Android Auto and full screen and then confirm. And what that'll do is it'll restart the unit and then when the unit comes back on, you are in full screen mode. And again, it's very similar to before where you've got all of your apps in here. And then on to CarPlay. So in the settings here, you just go in, you change it to CarPlay. Let's do normal for now. Confirm. On the iPhone then, you just go down. Then I get a notification on here saying, use CarPlay. And this is why I don't like Apple. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We now have Apple CarPlay. Uh, however, it thinks that I'm in San Jose, which is a little bit strange. But again, you've got all your standard apps and you can do that in full screen too. So again, there's Apple CarPlay. It is working wirelessly. Here's my phone, no cable. Right, let's swap it back to a proper phone and have Android Auto. All right, review time. So I've actually had this product installed for about a month now and I wanted to do that just to give me some time to get used to it and to give it a really good, thorough, honest review. So then let's get the formalities out of the way. One Car Stereo have sent me this unit for free in return for an unbiased review. Now, if you're familiar with the channel and you're familiar with my way of doing things, you'll know that I don't beat around the bush and that I will always give an honest review. The other thing to say is that this review is completely subjective. It's all my own opinion and based on my experience of using this for the past month or so. If you are considering buying one of these as well, I do have a What The Tesla discount code. It's exactly that. You go onto their website and you type in What The Tesla and that will give you 30% off one of these units, which is actually quite a good deal when you uh, consider how much you can spend on upgrading your entertainment devices in things like a BMW. I remember when I went from a BMW uh, 4 Series, the upgrade from the business navigation to the pro navigation, it was like £2,000. So actually when you put that into context, this is actually a really good value product. Let's go through to the review. The easiest way to do the review is to share some of the things that I love about the product and some of the things that I don't love about the product. So let's start with the positive first. This unit looks almost factory standard. The quality of the finish and the way that it looks and fits in with the car is just exceptional and it kind of looks like it came with the car. Next up, the screen estate. So in the Model X and the Model S you have the additional driver's display and it's really helpful for being able to see multiple things at the same time. For example, in the Tesla Model 3 which I have here, whenever you click on something on the screen it then takes away the map which can be quite frustrating whereas with this unit if you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and you're using Waze, another one of the benefits, you can actually see the map still on the screen while you're doing things on the car menu. The other benefit of having the digital driver's display is you can see multiple things at the same time, like you can see the battery percentage as well as how many miles you have left. You can also see the odometer, 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 I don't know, the odometer, still doesn't sound right, odometer. The main benefit really of this screen is having the ability to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay if you're one of those. And um, on the website actually, it says that it's wired Android Auto, but for me with the Google Pixel 6 Pro, I don't need a wire. It's wireless and it works perfectly without the wire. So really, really good feature there. It does mean then that you can use things like Waze, you can see traffic information. So actually the unit could pay for itself. I know it would take a, a long time to pay for itself, but if you're paying 10 pounds a month for the premium connectivity, actually you don't need that anymore. And one of the other nice things is you've got all your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay apps on there as well. So things like Audible, which aren't native to the Tesla infotainment, you can have it through here, which is again, a really nice feature. 
There's also some flexibility within the unit where you can have your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay as split screen where you can have the speedo and everything and all that kind of information to the right and then you have your mobile phone integration on the left or you can have it full screen as well because obviously you've got the um, miles per hour and everything that you need on the main screen as well. So again, a, just a, a nice bit of flexibility there. Next up, it is as easy to use as the main touchscreen in the car because it is a touchscreen and it's just really quite easy to use. There's really not many menu options and once it's set up, it's good to go. Right then, now it's time for the things that I don't love so much about the unit. And like I said, this is completely subjective. It is my own opinion, um, but these are the things that I found challenging. So number one has got to be the installation. Like I said earlier in the video, I think I found out why there were less, or in fact none at the time of recording, videos of installing these units on right-hand drive cars. And that's because the computer that sits behind the dashboard is actually upside down. So where you've got in the left-hand drive cars, people installing it and saying, oh, it's really difficult on the right-hand drive cars because the actual connection is even further up into the dashboard, it's even harder to get to it. So it was doable. I did bruise my hands and graze them a little bit. And if you've got smaller hands, you're probably gonna be all right you've just got to be really patient during that and I've got to say for a few minutes of pain and frustration and shouting um, it it was definitely worth the install the next one yeah okay you might call me a bit picky for this one but I like a bit of air conditioning blowing in my face on a hot summer's day oh yeah <laughs> anyway this unit, because it sits on the air conditioning vent, you actually can't get the airflow to hit your face anymore. So it's not really a big deal, but you know, if you're really hot on a summer's day and you want a bit of fresh, cold air coming through the air conditioning, um, it kind of intercepts that flow to your face and it has to go round the screen. So you don't get quite the blast of air that you would normally. Again, it's not really a big deal, but just something to note. When the unit first turns on, the logo that comes up is a little bit ugly. So that's, again, me being really picky. Um, but also when you first turn it on, everything's in kilometers instead of miles. So even if your main display is set to miles, things show on this unit as kilometers. And then as soon as you put it into drive, it all changes to miles. So just a little bit of an oddity, but really not an issue. The only thing I have seen a lag with is the Bluetooth because actually when you are pairing your phone you pair it to the digital drivers display for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and then that daisy chains the Bluetooth connection to the car. So if you're on a phone call or you are listening to a podcast or something like that or even just listening to music off your phone through the unit there can be a small delay. Now it's not a very big delay but it is somewhat noticeable. And that leads me on to the next thing. I've not seen that there's an easy way to update this because it runs on Linux. Um, it doesn't directly connect to the internet as far as I can see. So whilst it has got a USB port and I'm sure there's ways of updating the firmware and running software updates and things through that USB port, it doesn't directly do it over the air like the Tesla unit does. So then my final verdict is that I really, really like this unit and absolutely I would buy one, especially considering the price. Like I said earlier, when you compare it to other brands of vehicle, you get so much functionality with this and actually with 30% discount, it just makes it super affordable really. Yes, okay, it can be a bit of a pain to install and yes, you may want somebody who knows what they're doing to install it, but actually, I'm kind of a Joe Bloggs. You know, I'm not particularly skilled at these things. I'm okay, but definitely um, wasn't too challenging for me to install it was just that that cable loom at the back that you had to intercept and that was the only tricky bit but again like I said it's worth it because actually you get a really good unit here it enables Android Auto I've got Waze I've got Audible I've got all the apps that I want from Android Auto it also means that I can save £10 a month because I don't need the premium connectivity pack I have all my traffic information on Waze I've got better navigation on Waze I can see the police on ways uh, not not that I need to and the thing is once you've installed it it's in you don't need to be faffing around with cables and things anymore because it's just there and it actually looks completely seamless fits really well with the car yeah just a really good unit so hopefully this video has helped you decide whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to buy one of these units and also hopefully helped you with the install as well if you're struggling with that if it has helped 
give me the thumbs up, drop a like, and if you'd like more content like this, please subscribe. If you are considering buying one of these units, go onto the One Car Stereo website and type in what the Tesla as a discount code, and that will enable you to have 30% off, which just makes it even better value and more affordable. As always, thanks for watching What the Tesla. Take care.